Right. Hi, my name is Trevor, and today we'll be talking about the history of Korean film. To begin with, American influence on Korean film. America's um, Hollywood has always held a very typical bias, and that bias has led to many foreign films, such as Korean films, to not be shown to American audiences. So films like Parasite are one of the very few to break into these mainstream audiences. Um, the history of Korean film, it first started in 1923 when the first Mu Song Yong Hwa was created. And this was the result, or this was the result of the, the North Korean and the, the Korean War and the Japanese occupancy, even though before then, most of the film in 19, before 1934 did not exist. So the golden age for Korean film was through 1955 to 1969. Most of the directors emerged from this period. The 70s brought an increase of government censorship due to Park Chung-hee, but the 80s brought back the film, film industry, and then the 90s <coughs> marked when the government officially started its support of the film industry. And the Huk Bek Pyurum is a black and white film. So the censorship of Park jong hees resume. In May of 1960, Park and his South Korean army took over the government. Park halted a number of productions with the rigid motion picture laws of 1969. And with the fourth revision that had been completed in 1973, it made it even harder for films to pass and be shown to audiences as they had to undergo multiple reviewings. Some South Korean films made in the 1950s and the early 2000s were The Handmaid, directed by Kim Kyung in 1961, The Mother and a Guest in 1961 as well, made by Shin Sang-ok, which, which made the South Korean entry for Best Foreign Film at the 35th Academy Awards, The March of Fools in 1935, and also Our Twisted Hero of 1992. Some characteristics of Korean cinema are the blending of genres, culture blending, for example, if we had to um, have an American example, it would be the parody of Scary Movie 2, even though uh, Korean film is diverse as American film, it is not nationalistic, nationalistically driven as North Korean cinema, and that's South Korean film. Famous directors would be Na Eun-kyu from the 1920s, would be Choi eun gu of the 40s, Kim Ki Young of the 1960s, <coughs> his, his films resurfaced in, in the early 1990s, Shin Sang Ok of 1958, Yu Hyung Mok, 1961, The Aimless Bullet, Lee Chang Ho, 1970s, Im Kwon 1980, and then most recent, Bong Ju Ong of 1990s. Hello, Chonin Yasminimida, and today I'm going to present the Korean film after 2000 century until today. So the South Korean film from 2000 until present like has been flourished and been su successful uh, in 20th century. But specifically from 2000 until 2009, it was a transformative decade for the Korean cinema, because many significant directors become famous. Yom Yong Kan, which means famous. Also, Korean film like travel worldwidely. Uh, some of the huge events in Korean cinema. In 2001, the local market share like the top of 15, which was a boom in overseas sale. In 2004, the, the Salmedu and Tigaki become the first film to sell like 10 million tickets. In 2004, also, the Old Boy wins Grand Prix, which is the second prize at the Cannes Film Festival. At 2006, the host breaks box office record and help like the local market share, which has reached 64%. Next slide. The Parasite movie uh, was the spotlight for South Korean, and it was uh, published by 
the director Bong Joon-ho film, which which has made a history and become like the first film of non-English to win this, the Oscar for Best Picture Awards, Best Director, Best Original Screenplay, and Best Foreign Language Film. Also, according to the box office, The Parasite Like accomplished about $160.8 million worldwide. Siga Chongen, Siga Chongen mean worldwide. And about one, more than 150 awards. So the story of Parasite, uh, briefly, is to talk about poor family, Kanan Han Kachok, the camps, Con. So their way into becoming the servant of a rich family, which is the Park family, but their easy life gets complicated and they threaten exposure. This movie was about 2 hours and 12 minutes. It was published in 2019, May 3rd. Next slide. Uh, so, example of the Korean films in the 20th century. So, in the first picture, you saw, you saw like, Park Chan-wook, uh, the director who earned, like, just, no, uh, who earned, like, not Spiong our borders, in Hand Median in 2016. You saw Burning, a uh, movie in 2018, which received International Critic Prize, Sang, and Sang in Korean means prize. And also, it wins in a festival bell award for best film. The World of Us is a movie of a female director, Yoon Ga Hyun, in 2016. He got Blue Dragon Film Apart for best new director and best screenplay. Uh, the last movie you saw House of Human Bird for Kim Boras in 2018. It, wa it has a success like Parasite movie and many people say like uh, it should has Oscar and Golden Age for Korean movies. Next. In South Korean film over the decades. So South Korean film, which is similar to American film thanks to Hollywood, evolves over time, changing from the politically focused lens to a lens focused more on society and interpersonal communication. So and as South Korean film and American film became more modern. Each industry derives from both historical and cultural nuances to drive a point or theme home. In the film Parasite, Bo Jung-ho, director of Parasite, uses the same elements from Housemaid of 1961, such as a social standing and economic structure, to relay more hidden messages to the audience. Trevor? Uh, films like, um, this is a list of films, The Host, 2006, Burning, 2018, Extreme Job, 2019, Parasite from 2019, and The Admiral, Roaring Currents, 2014, which is the highest grossing film, and then along with The Gods, The Two Worlds from 2017 was also another grossing film. The Admiral, Roaring Currents is a historical film about Admiral Yi. Um, which might have to do with the nationalism aspect as to why it is uh, so popular. So, I'm Anthony Mack. For my part, I'm doing North Korean cinema. Uh, I am including this part to the project because I know most people will be focusing on South Korea, but North Koreans are also Koreans. Um, this is Bukhan Yonghwa. Uh, book is what is mostly referred to as North Korea by South Koreans. Um, next slide, please. So... North Korean cinema mostly developed out of the Korean War. Um, the Korean War had a huge effect on both sides of the conflict, so South and North Korea both have a lot of films about this. But North Korea specifically was born out of the Korean War and by being backed by the Soviets was influenced by their um, movies and propaganda. Unlike um, South Korea that was influenced by Hollywood, North Korea is influenced by the Soviet mu music scene, um, I'm sorry, movie scene at that time. Um, it's mostly used as propaganda. Um, that doesn't mean there is not some artistic merit to it, but the most, the big purpose of it is by the Kim regime to create a national culture and idea. 
most of the war um, films are war films about national unity and military. Uh, I show on the bottom right, there's a picture of Squirrel and Hedgehog, which is a children's cartoon in Korea that literally involves killing American soldiers and things, which is just frightening to us in the West, but to them it creates a more unified culture. Um, the North Korean word they use is Jawi, which is self-defense, um, but that's not necessarily what you would use in a regular conversation. So I've also included uh, Jackie Bungo, which is what you would use as self-defense in regular speech, but just know that Jawi is like more of a philosophy. Uh, next slide. So it's not quite as developed as uh, Western media, which makes sense. It's running on a much more limited budget in a third world country that's a dictatorship. Um, but that being, and, and uh, a movie made 1970 and 1999 is mostly the same. Uh, to test that theory, I actually watched a few North Korean films. I watched one from 1949, one from 1970, and one from 2000, and they all were pretty much exactly the same. They promote jucha, which I have written in the bottom, highlighted in pink. It literally means to subject, but this is more used as the Kim Dynasty's uh, almost Marxist ideology. We might think of um, Castroism or Marxism as a similar word, but jucha is specifically um, this North Korean variety that is uh, very promoting of self-reliance and things of that nature. The movies, therefore, um, play that. The Kim Dynasty in the movies are often portrayed as a father figure, as the hero of Korea, as the thing that is saving Korea from these outside threats, um, and through Jawi and Jucha, um, it usually promotes militarism. Uh, there's some of the outside threats is usually the Japanese and Americans. It seems the South Koreans are less so de um, depicted as the threat. I mean, they are, but um, the North Koreans like the South Koreans, still consider them to be Koreans, so they seem to be less of a um, major theme. Uh, tradition is very promoted. I watched a movie that was in 2001, and people were still dressed in traditional clothing. Um, they were using like very formal speaking to um, pretty much everybody, but especially to their family. Um, it is kind of a tie that it's the Korean culture the nationalism in Korean culture, so traditional Korean culture is superior to other cultures, if that makes sense. A resistance to modernization. Um, next slide, please. So, uh, some major um, North Korean films. Uh, I watched some of these. Uh, ne, ne Ko Hyung is like my home village. This is North Korea's first feature film. North Korea didn't quite exist as a country at this time. It did, but it wasn't, it was still in, just after the Korean War. Um, it's just a movie about pretty much what it says about the home village. Uh, Flower Girl is an anti-Japanese um, war in North Korea. It's very popular in North Korea. It's apparently written by, um, based on a play written by Kim Il-sung, but with the propaganda, it's hard to tell. Unsung Heroes is famous as one of the longest movies in history. It's over 20 hours. It's a spy thriller. And Runaway was produced by Shing Sang Uk, which was mentioned earlier as a famous director. He was kidnapped along with his wife um, and sent to North Korea to produce films for the Kim Dynasty. Thank you. Uh, in specifically in 1978, his uh, wife was kidnapped and used as bait in Hong Kong to lure Shing Sang Uk out to try and find her. And then they both were um, kidnapped and sent to uh, North Korea, where the Kims apparently treated them nicely, but forced them to watch four films from Kim Il-sung's huge library of over 15,000 films every single day. They had to write a report on it, too. Um, it's a bit cut off there, but they produced about six films, one of which is a uh, Godzilla knockoff. It's very funny. The Korean word I put here is napchihara, which is to kidnap, um, and would be used in this context. Um, I, I had this problem researching, but... Uh, it's very hard to find information about North Korea. A lot of these films are not shown outside North Korea. The only way I was able to watch any of them is there's bootleg Chinese websites and uh, South Korean bootleg websites. Um, North Korea refers to the Korean Peninsula as Chosan instead of Hanguk, which is we use in South Korea. Chosan is from the Chosan Dynasty. Um, it's again trying to promote that nationalist Korea idea that you see in the movies. I thought that was an important word to include. Um, tells a lot about North Korean culture. Um, yeah, and next. Here's our glossary. 
Um, this includes uh, most of the words in the slides. And if you continue forward, you can see our citations. Um, we have links to some movies, and I used a few um, links to JSTOR. If you could keep moving the slides forward. All right. Thank you. Uh, enjoy the quarantine, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs>